Hi everyone. Welcome to MS Build on demand session on Microsoft Computer Training Platform. My name is Karima Kamtan and I am the senior program manager in Tech for Social Impact team. I have with me Tinshuk Singh from my team and we both are super excited to walk you through the platform which is helping in accelerating mission outcomes especially in emer emerging markets. Today we would provide you an overview of the platform cover various learning scenarios across the globe and how the platform is being extended to work in low and no connectivity zones with demos and a deep dive into the platform architecture. Just to set some context, as we all are aware that access to technology and internet has been a challenge in emerging markets with less than 50% people being connected online and having low bandwidth issues. The literacy percentage and the per capita income are incomparable to that of developed markets. With the COVID-19 pandemic, the learning of over 1.5 billion children across 190 countries got interrupted. Also pandemic, uh, with pandemic, the digital divide is becoming more and more apparent and there's a huge requirement to bridge that gap. We have a unique opportunity in front of us in building technology platforms that can help in reducing this gap. And one of these opportunities is through skilling. Skilling opens up so many avenues and helps us drive economic empowerment and inclusivity across the globe. Microsoft Company Training, an Azure-based PaaS offering, addresses these challenges and enables learning at all levels of connectivity for everyone, everywhere, aligning with Microsoft's mission to empower every learner on the planet to achieve more. Now, some glimpses of MCT journey so far. The concept of this platform was first conceived by Microsoft research team and then announced by our CEO in 2017 as a product offering named Project Sangam as part of Digital India Initiative. Our first customer was Switch Bharat from India, where Microsoft India partnered with the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs to deploy Project Sangam for training functionaries and officers across India on best sanitation practices. Through this partnership, 110,000 municipal functionaries were trained across 4,000 cities in India. The platform then evolved into its present form, Microsoft Community Training, to address the needs of global audience, especially in emerging markets. We were working in close collaboration with UNICEF on Learning Passport. Learning Passport is a collaborative effort between UNICEF, Microsoft, and University of Cambridge. It provides personalized and flexible learning to children and youth, ensuring they can access local, contextualized, and supplementary content. Ministries of Education in various countries are onboarding to learning passport rapidly. The last two years when the world was hit by a pandemic, education and skilling was severely impacted. Only way out was digital skilling, and we saw a huge uptick in MCT adoption, leading to a 5 million milestone for us, uh, with 5 million users onboarded to the platform. Also, on commercial side, we had our first S500 customer Grab onboarding to the platform. Grab is in Southeast Asia, and they are into transport services and also offer food delivery and digital payment services via a mobile app. Continuing with the momentum, recently we achieved another milestone of having 10 million users onboarded to the platform and the number is still growing. Now talking about value that MCT brings to the customer, it is a affordable general purpose LMS platform that provides a digital experience to learn any topic by any learner anywhere. It caters to priority scenarios across commercial and social sectors like volunteer skilling, program delivery, education, reskilling, and frontline, especially in emerging markets. MCT is already powering many large scale training initiatives for nonprofits and governments. 
These programs have diverse objectives such as providing technical training to unemployed youth, providing online training resources to students in low and low connectivity region, and drive digital transformation by empowering and training first-line workers, partner networks across emerging markets. From the technology and capability standpoint, platform does two things. First, training at scale, and this is achieved by virtue of this being a scalable cloud platform on Azure. Second, addressing the diverse needs of various communities across the globe, especially in emerging markets, for being inclusive. Let's dive a little deeper into the inclusivity and diversity aspects. MCT provisions equality in skilling regardless of ability, income, language, location, identity, so on and so forth. For example, platform is accessible through multiple various devices like mobile, PC, tablet. For identity, MCT is accessible via a phone number, a social login, work account, or any custom identity. Talking about languages, it's localized in 50 plus languages and more are being added with every release. This enables our learners to learn in the local languages and dialects they are comfortable with. In terms of bandwidth, whether you are connected always intermittently or have no connectivity, your learning never stops with MCT. Here is a quick recap and summary of the platform benefits for any organization, facilitators, and learners. MCT comes with out-of-box digital literacy content from Microsoft, which you can leverage in your learning programs and get a head start with the content. It offers custom branding, and it's very easy to deploy and has built-in analytics. And the best part is you only pay for the underlying Azure services based on your consumption. Due to its unique capabilities, MCT has customers across industries. For example, nonprofit engagements with various ministries in different countries are using MCT for community training programs. On the commercial side, we have customers like Grab. They are training millions of drivers and merchants on MCT for their safety and compliance trainings and other on-demand trainings. And then we have partners like UNICEF with a mission that every learner deserves access to the best learning opportunities and support system. UNICEF's learning passport powered by MCT is targeted at low and middle income countries, and they have deployment in 20 countries and many more in pipeline. Till now, we were talking about scaling in high and low bit connectivities. At high connectivity, you can stream content and the platform can be used as a standalone application or integrated with teams for richer communication experiences. Here, the user progress is synced to cloud in real time. During intermittent connectivity, users can download lessons and, and assessments when they are online and consume them when they are offline. The progress of the lessons and assessment will be synced to cloud whenever the learner is connected to the cloud. Finally, there is a scenario of absolutely no internet connectivity. Think about refugee camps, regions with civil unrest, or regions prone to natural disasters. How do you enable digital learning in these disconnected worlds? MCT has a solution for this with MCT offline offering, which is in private preview. It enables digital learning in offline world with no connectivity. The offline model utilizes IoT Hub and Edge devices that, a, that act as both a server storing all digital content and learners, learner records, and a local Wi-Fi so that learners can connect their devices to access all digital content. This offline model enables learners and teachers located in low to no connectivity areas to continue the education, helping bridge the digital learning gap. What you see here is an offline platform in action in Sierra Leone in collaboration with Learning Passport Program uh, with UNICEF. Here the students are 
in a zone where there is no internet and they are using their mobile devices and are connected to an edge device which is acting as a local Wi-Fi and continuing with their learnings. Isn't it fabulous? Here is a demo of the learner experience where you will see how a learner consumes content on mobile, takes assessments and gets certified on the online platform. Post this demo, Kinship from my team will take it over for a deep dive into architecture and explain how all of this works. Hi, my name is Kinshuk and I'm a senior software engineer on Microsoft Community Training Team. I'll be giving an overview of our platform architecture and we'll be covering our online and offline offerings. MCT is a PaaS offering built on top of Azure. The service is an Azure managed application that is available on Azure Marketplace. Our customers can deploy this entire suite directly via the Azure Marketplace by clicking on the Get It Now. This will run you through a wizard to deploy the Microsoft Community Training instance on your Azure subscription. Once the instance is deployed, it will create all the Azure resources required to run the service, which will be visible in the customer subscription. Once deployed, uh, it should look something like this. Now let's dive deep into the online platform architecture for MCT. So the diagram here summarizes the different components that we use in our service. So the top layer is the front end, front end layer and the different front end services that we support. So currently we support multiple front ends that includes a web based application and Android application that is built on top, top of Xamarin framework. We are in the process of migrating to a progressive web application, which will, which will reduce the efforts required to maintain the Android app. We also have Teams integration available and that allows our customers to directly use MCT from within the Teams app. Now let's look into the different backend components of MCT. 
So the first component that we have is Azure front door and all the customer requests first hit our front door. And then front door routes it to the different backend services. Azure front door also acts as a CDN for us and we use it to serve static content. Behind front door, we have our web application that is hosted on Azure web application platform. This service exposes the REST APIs that the front end interacts with. We use Azure SQL to persist all the transactional data in the system. All the blobs, blob data like course content is persisted in Azure blob storage. The platform also supports media content and for streaming media to end users, we leverage Azure media services. We use multi-bit rate encoding, which helps us to serve customers in regions with poor internet connectivity. All the videos that are served on the platform use AES encryption. Next service is th uh, that we use in our in our in MCT is Key Vault, which is a equally important service. We use it to store secrets and connection strings for all the different uh, Azure resources that we use in, in MCT. We also provide analytics out of the box, but for customers who need advanced analytics, analytics we support Power BI integrations. For all our telemetry and metric metrics need, we actually uh, leverage application insights. Next, we'll talk about the different authentication mode that is supported by MCT. So we support various authentication mechanism like Azure AD, Azure AD B2C, phone authentication and service to service authentication. And not talk much about Azure AD and Azure AD B2C because they are well known services within Microsoft. Phone authentication service is a customer implementation written by our team, which is which is uh, which uses identity identity server underneath and that allows users to log in using their phone numbers. Service to service authentication allows MSI supported application to directly interact with our service. This comes in handy for users that have a need of automating workflows and they want to call our APIs directly. Another interesting aspect is how we collect telemetry and diagnostic data from customer subscriptions. So we run function apps in our AME tenant to fetch telemetry data from customer application insights and store it in our Azure Data Explorer for, for the, our customer telemetry and dashboarding requirements. With this, now I'll move to the offline architecture and, and its details. With offline, our end goal is to provide a platform that enables end users to use MCT from anywhere, especially in areas where there is limited internet, limited or no internet connectivity. As we already know that Microsoft Community Training online instance is deployed on Azure Cloud within customer's Azure subscription. To ensure completely offline learning, we containerize selected components of MCT and deploy them on S devices. So for us, an S device is any Linux or Windows powered device with the capability to host local Wi-Fi. The S device acts as a container for our offline platform. Learners can use their mobile, tablets, or computers to connect to the S device without the need of any internet connection. Learner can access lessons, give exams while connected to the S device, which records their progress. The progress then is transferred back to the Azure cloud. Azure IoT Hub is the resource that is deployed in the customer's Azure subscription, along with the resources required to run the online instance to provision and manage the S devices at scale. Content which includes learning paths, courses, assessments are transferred from the cloud instance to the S device, and learner progress from S device is synced back to the cloud instance via either IoT Hub over internet or external storage devices such as pen drives or hard disks. Any S-device can be set up as parent to ensure that child and parent S-devices continue to communicate over the local network, while only the parent S-devices synced over the internet to the cloud instance with the data for, from all its child S-devices. This supports the scenario where certain S-devices may not come online ever. Let's 
dig a little deeper into the challenges we face while working on the offline. When MCD service was originally designed, it was intended to add, it was heavily dependent on Azure services and was cloud native. So to enable the service to run, uh, run on a edge device with no internet connectivity, we had to figure out alternatives for a different for the different cloud services that we were using in MCT online. For example, uh, we were using Azure SQL and Azure storage for our storage needs. We had to find alternatives for them when we moved to offline world. Similarly, Azure AD and Azure AD B2C were the services that were do or that were taking care of ident authentication and authorization for us on the online side. But when we moved to a offline world, we had to write we had to write services to handle local identity and authentication. Similarly, we didn't have application insights available on offline. That forced us to resort to file based logging and telemetry collection. Now let's cover what happens when a new Linux device is being set up. So to set up a new Linux device, we leverage device provisioning service to connect his device with the Azure IoT hub. These Azure IoT hubs are actually paired with the online instance. Once the device is connected to IoT hub, it talks to MCT cloud instance to fetch course content and configuration data. Once it has fetched all the data, the device is now ready to use and it is shipped to a remote location where the learners can start using the device. Let's look into the architecture of a, of a particular S device. So each device consists of multiple containers. So we'll talk about all these containers and what they are used for one by one. So the first container that we have is the Nginx container. Nginx is the reverse proxy that listens to all the customer traffic and based on the request then routes it to the different containers that we have available on the S device. Behind Nginx, we have the MCT web app setting, which is which is equivalent to the to our uh, Azure application, Azure web application running on the cloud side. We also have our custom implementation of identity server running as a separate con container, which is res responsible for all the authentication requirements. We have a SQL edge container running for for all our transactional data and a SQL edge for all the blob data that we want to store on, on the offline side. We don't have any Azure media services alternative currently available on offline, and currently the videos are being streamed directly from the Azure blob edge. So this covers all the different containers uh, that we are running on, on our edge device and what purpose they are solving. And now let's talk about another critical aspect of our offline solution. In offline, we allow to sync content and user progress data between the cloud and the offline devices. So first we'll try to see how we how we sync user progress data from edge devices to online instances. So on, on our edge devices, periodic snapshot of the user progress data is taken, and this data is then stored in the local blob store. Once the edge device connects to the internet, the data from the blob store is then moved to the online instance where it is stored in the blob store. And then ETL into the into the SQL database for the online instance. This ensures that all the progress from the edge devices is present in the online instance as well. Similarly, for content sync, we leverage Azure IoT Hub to send messages whenever a new new content is added or existing content gets updated on the online instance. Once these messages are received by the offline device, it pulls the latest version of the content from the online cloud instance and then updates its data locally. 
This allows the users to move seamlessly from online to offline world and vice versa without losing any progress. There are a lot of such features that are still under works and we are constantly innovating on behalf of our customers to provide an amazing experience. With this, I would like to conclude this architecture overview. For any queries about the product, feel free to reach out to either me or Garimo. Thanks, Kinshuk, for detailed insights into an extraordinary solution using online and offline models, creating a unique opportunity for children and youth to continue their studies and gain the necessary skills they need to thrive regardless of their location. I'm super proud to mention that Learning Passport got selected as one of the Times 100 Best Innovations of 2021. Now, I would like to end this session with a demo of how learners are able to connect their devices to the Hub device via a web browser and get access to digital learning content in an offline world. Hope you enjoyed the session and thanks for watching.